morning, saints. It's a fine morning to be here to serve the Lord. I want to share something with you. Years ago, when I was seeking the Holy Ghost, which Brother Allen and Brother Bud have both been putting quite a bit of emphasis on, that you must have the Holy Ghost. Years ago, when I was seeking the Holy Ghost, I picked up a little magazine that someone had written, and then it said, when seeking the Holy Ghost, seek the giver and not the gift. In other words, praise him. You praise him enough, you get what you need. So that's my emphasis when I come up here to speak to you. God wants to dwell in the praises of his people. He wants, he wants you to praise him and magnify him and, and commit your total being to him. You can trust him. He won't lead you wrong. Father, this morning as we come before your presence, we just want to present ourselves, O oh Lord, in a way that's acceptable unto thee. And Father, as we go about our daily activities, we look to thee, Father, daily for your guidance and strength and your sufficiency in every way of life. And Father, there's many things upon our hearts and minds in these days, even at the loss of our precious brother and the many that are sick and many, O oh Lord, that have difficult situations that are not easy to resolve. But you, we ask, O oh Lord, that you would be present with each one, each one of these that believe and trust in thee, O oh God, the true children of God that have these needs. Would you just be merciful to each one, O oh Lord, and extend your hand of grace and mercy and healing and, and financial help and, and decisions that must be made. Give strength and sufficiency in every way, O oh Lord, to each one that will yield to you, we pray. And let it be, O oh Lord, that as we assemble here this morning, that we'll be pliable in thy hands, that we might yield ourselves unto thee and really have an anointed service today, whereby you might have your total will and purpose accomplished in each of us, even in this very gathering this morning. <clears throat> Father, we pray for Israel. It looks like the time is short when they're going to have to do what we're looking for them to do, and we just pray that thou shalt Strengthen every situation, Lord, involving Israel in all of this conflict. We praise you this morning, give honor and praise unto thee, and ask that you would anoint your servant as he comes to bring the message to us this morning. And Father, as Brother David comes to lead the singing, let it be, O Lord, by thy precious anointing. That's so important to all of us, O God, that we might have your precious anointing in our midst. We thank you in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. <clears throat> How great it is to serve a living God. Who God, he said. 
after all now by myself I cannot make it but I know he said to help me he will hear my cry if on him I will call just keep on trusting and believing are the words I hear him whisper just a few more days to labor after all oh after all this life is over and my burdens have been lifted and i stand upon the mountain top so tall oh looking over in that city oh that the savior is preparing it gives me faith that i can make it after all now by myself i cannot make it but i know he said to help me he will hear my cry if on him i will call just keep on trusting and believing are the words i hear him whisper just a few more days to labor after all oh after all this life is over and my burdens have been lifted and i stand up on the mountain top so seated. Sister Diane, would you and Sister Gloria have a song for us? Then how about Sister Laurie and Sister Glenda after that?
There is coming a day when no heartaches will come, no more clouds in the sky, no more tears to dim the eye. All is peace forevermore on that happy golden shore. What a day! Glorious day that will be. What a day that will be when my Jesus I will see. When I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his. What a day, glorious day, that will be. There'll be no sorrows there, no more burdens to bear, no more sickness nor pain, no more pain. Sister Lori and Sister Glenda, and how about Sister Gail Brumley after that?
I know the Lord gave me this job at Floyd Memorial. I, you don't get out of school and get a first shift job, and, and I know his hand was in that, but I really hate working every other weekend, especially 
or every third, every Sunday. I hate that. So um, today was my day to work. Three weeks ago on a Sunday was my day to work, and I was here that day too. Um, they called me or they texted me this morning, and when you're over nurses for the amount of patients you have, you get whopped. So this is the second Sunday that I was scheduled to work that I got whopped, and I want to thank the Lord because I wanted to be here. Thank you, sisters, for that. All right, Sister Gill. Then how about Brother Crace after that? <clears throat> If you've knelt beside the rubble of an aching, broken heart, when the things you gave your life for fell apart, you're not the first to be acquainted. Sorrow, grief, and pain. But the master promised sunshine after rain. Hold on, my child. Joy comes in the morning. Trust in God in mountains you can't move. You risk your life on things you cannot prove. But to give the things you cannot keep for what you cannot lose. Is the way to find the joy God has for you. Hold on, my child. Joy comes in the morning. Weeping only lasts for. Sisters, for that, brother 
Cruz. so good to be here this morning yes brother turner i do praise the lord with all my heart mind and soul i do thank him for the holy ghost that he gave me without it brother sister there's no way you can understand that precious old word it's a it's a revelation only god can give amen you know it's not often that you see a grown man cry But you folks that's known me for years that <laughs> I always had to cry a little bit because he has been so good to me. I was sitting there a few minutes ago and when the sisters were singing the, the other two that came, not the last one but the two before that and I heard that steel guitar cry I cried. And I just, I've often said, if I, when I get to heaven, if there's any such thing as having a musical instrument there, I want a gold one. I want a gold steel guitar. I'm so thankful to God for my grandson that decided he wanted to play the steel guitar. And I just made one available to him. <laughs> and I want to hear that steel guitar cry. I have a lot of old songs. I got a song book. It's got 250 songs in it. And I can sing every one of them. But I decided uh, to sing some new songs. And I, I didn't bring my song book along. But I got a favorite I'd like to sing this morning. And uh, I'll play it. It'd be a blessing to you. So you just pray for me. The holy hills of heaven calls me To mansions bright across the sea Where loved ones wait and crowns are given and the hills of home keep calling me. This house of flesh is but a prison, bars of bone, oh my soul. But the doors of prayer gonna burst wide open when the angel said, My spirit free. I'll take my flight like a mighty eagle. Over hills of all he calling me. I see love ones over yonder. Tears are gone and hearts are free. And the hills of hope keep calling me. This house of flesh 
is but a prison bars of bones oh my soul but the doors of When the angel said, my spirit free, I'll take my flight like a mighty eagle over hills of home. for that. All right. A few sisters would come on. much of a card person and I have some things that I want to say at some point but I want to wait until the Lord gives me the full things that I want to say but in the meantime I can't thank you enough for what Faith Assembly has meant to my family in this time and um, your unconditional support was felt and needed the outpouring and we just want to thank you and continue to pray for us there is certainly a hole in our heart and our home, but God will give us grace. And I, I want to go home. Not because I just want to see David, but I want to see the Savior and the one who died for my sins. And he was per beat that in this time of pain that I could be comforted. And I want to see him and thank him for that. Pray for us as we sing this song. It's been a little bit since we practiced. Steve. Stormy night, I need your. 
your guiding light. Lord, I come to you to make it through this trial. And Lord, I will serve you. And Lord, I'll adore you. Just let your mercy fall. before all of this happened and I was just praying for the Lord to um, prevent uh, give me an opportunity to give it um, about a year ago I started suffering migraines and once I had one the rest of my day was done I couldn't do anything else so we went to the doctor and she said oh, it's just allergies so after months of taking a cornucopia of allergy medicines I still had migraines so I went back to the doctor and she told me it was just stress which I'm stressed every day at school, so that really didn't help. And she didn't offer any medicine, which I really didn't want any. So I just put it in the Lord's hands. And I laid a fleece before the Lord during 
spring convention because I had one every night at spring convention. And I didn't feel like talking to anybody. I was miserable. And the fleece didn't come to pass during convention, so I told the Lord that my fleece still stood and I still just waited on my healing. And the week before finals week at school, which is the most stressful week of school, you have tests every day and your whole grade depends on that test, the fleece came to pass and I was healed. And I didn't have one stress during that whole week. I was, it was so peaceful and I just trusted the Lord with my grades and I haven't had a migraine since. And I just wanted to thank the Lord. I am all in all. Okay, my child, this day I have seen as you prayed in your heart of prayer, and you have said unto me, if I could but have a word from the Lord, I would receive that which I have need of. My people, I am God. My child, your prayer this day has come before my throne, and I have heard that cry within your heart. My child, the day shall come, not many days hence, when in your sleep you shall awaken. And in that day, my child, I will come to you, and in that hour, by my spirit, I shall give you what you have need of. Lord, look to me. I am God. I am all in all. I will never fail. My people, the end is at hand. Come before me in prayer. That which you do, do quickly. Thus saith the Lord. Thank you, sisters, for that song, and thank each one of you for your songs. Let us all stand. Praise the Lord. I'll turn the service over to Brother Allen. Praise the Lord. Name. Hey, hey, been declared from that of my throne that in the days that do last shortly before thee that I will call upon those that thou hast never seen used before I say truly I have placed gifts in that of my body and surely thou art living in the hour when thou shalt see those gifts that thou hast not seen used heretofore I say as the brother that has done passed and gone on as he has stood and he declared that what I have laid upon his heart I say surely that shall come to pass I say I do not lie I make no mistakes. I say take comfort and joy that thou art living in the closing of time and thou art among that elite number that shall be transformed in the twinkling of an eye. I say take heed this day to the words that my servant will say. I say it shall be strength and light and encouragement to thy days that lie before thee. I say rejoice in me, the Lord thy God, that thou truly art in my elect and thou art living before the closing of time. Thus saith the Holy Ghost. Name. Name.
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Father, that you are our Father, and that you are God of all situations and trials and tests. And we pray now, Lord, your comfort upon each one. Thank you for your blessings. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your gifts. And I pray, Lord, you'd bless those that do have those gifts in their lives that maybe they've never used them before. So may you just have your way now in this service and help me, Lord, to say the things that is before me and give us all strength and courage in this hour of time. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you, Brother Bud. Well, I thank the Lord for the beautiful weather that we're having. And for everyone that is here this morning, good to see Brother and Sister Grace with us. And I, I want to thank the Brother and the Sister that you let the Lord use you this morning. Because as the gifts have been ministered, I didn't do it to pump up people or to cause people to, uh, to do something without having a gift. But those that do, I want to encourage them because of the hour we're living in. I have some important things to say here this morning and I want to get into those things at this time. Uh, I know Sunday night that I had uh, re read that one place or started to in first Peter chapter four starting in verse seven. I want to go back there this morning because there's no way that I could do it justice with just a few minutes of time. We're living in such an hour as the only thing that it can be is the coming of the Lord. And it's right before us. And God has given us understanding of the hour we're living in and the time and the purpose that we have. And I want to I wanna honor that. And I know that it speaks in the scripture of something that I haven't gone over yet. Uh, 1 Corinthians 9, which you don't have to turn there, 16 through 18. Paul says, woe is me if I preach not the gospel. And I don't want that woe put upon me. Because it is too important to 
uh, to the gospel because we find it in uh, Ephesians or in uh, Ezekiel chapter 3 and chapter 33 where he is speaking of being a watchman. Song Brother Christ used to sing. And the watchman on the wall. And it's important that uh, we be led of the Lord into the things that we say and that, that we know where to uh, apply them. I have other scriptures that I've been into that I will refer to in this. I hope to get anyway to a certain point this morning. That's why that I'm getting into the scripture as early as I am. Because I always feel for that anointing before that I work my way into too much of the word because with without the anointing then it's just words but we know that there is an anointing for the ministry if they wait on that but I want to turn, as you've turned in your Bible, I want to start in verse 7 of the fourth chapter. But the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober, and watch unto prayer. He's very uh, adamant on what that he's talking about. And above all things have fervent charity. That is a word that we have emphasized, at least spent one message on that. The 13th chapter of 1 Corinthians. Above all things have fervent charity among yourselves. I'm not talking about the world, it says among yourselves. For charity shall cover the multitude of sins. That love of God will cover a multitude of sins. When he's talking about that, he's talking about certain particular things that uh, about grudges, about different uh, things of the flesh that we would hold one toward another. And as he, because that's what he, he said among yourselves. That would be desiring certain things of another or lust or whatever it would be, whatever it would hold to. Use hospitality one to another without grudging. He said use it. It's there. All we got to do is use it. And the thing about using it, it don't wire out. It's not like a used car. No, it don't wear out. As every man hath received the gift, the gift of the Holy Ghost. Even so minister the same to another. As good stewards of the manifold grace of God, a steward is someone that keeps someone else's treasures. 
And they are treasures, the treasures of the Word of God. We're not here to promote ourselves or to promote good speech or fine words. I remember a Methodist preacher when I was in the Methodist church, they said you had to have a dictionary to follow him because he couldn't speak on the common man's language. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God giveth. So we can't go beyond the ability, ability that God has given us. There's, there's a stopping place and everyone does not have the ability of another one. If I, if I got out here, I'm not saying that I won't sometime. If I got out here and, and run the aisles and stomp the floor, that's, that's not in, in me to do so in ministering. But I'm not saying anything about somebody else that does. Uh, see what I'm talking about? I'm talking about finding our own level. My level is not the level of Brother Bud. I'm not, I'm not trying to copy Brother Bud, and I did not try, I am not, even though I'm accused of it, of trying to copy Brother Jackson. No doubt, Brother Jackson was accused of trying to uh, copy Brother Branham. But, I, but whenever I heard the word, I heard it different. It wasn't, it wasn't a different message, but it was a different level. A different loyalty, or I shouldn't say that. It was a different uh, thing within them of how they presented truth. Both of them were loyal to the Word. That God in all things may be glorified, see, through Jesus Christ. To whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trials which are to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. What we go through, most of the world goes through, but they don't give glory to God. It's just, a, it's just a burden to them. It's just something that is in their way. But rejoice inasmuch as you're partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when His glory shall be revealed, you may be glad also with exceeding joy. When His glory is revealed, that's when you're going to be revealed. If you be reproached for Christ, for the name of Christ, happy are you. Is it a bad thing for people to talk about you because you go to faith assembly? Down there at that place where they walked away from truth. <laughs> I, I don't feel that way. But my, I mean, uh, there are a lot of people feel that way. They're just 
Brother Bud and me, just two ministers that had ambitions before Brother Branham died. We couldn't wait. You are stupid. If you be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are you. For the Spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. On their part He is evil spoken of, but on your part He is glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, or as a thief, or as an evildoer, or as a busybody. That's in other men matters. <laughs> I mean that don't that don't list that with very good company. <laughs> Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. For the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God. That is where I got to Sunday. That's where I stopped. Because... It was about five minutes till Sunday night whenever I got there, so I wasn't going to go over or go into it. Judgment must begin at the house of God. And we're, we are, <laughs> of course they say, uh, Brother Jackson called this the Jerusalem of this day. He called this church the Jerusalem of this day. He also called it the lighthouse. But now then, the lighthouse is anywhere. Out in a field. No, this is a... This is the area of where God's visitation rested. Started out down on the banks of the Ohio. Whenever when they, ever the expression of the angel of the Lord said in 1933, as the light come down over the river after the 17th person had been baptized, a voice come to Brother Branham as John the Baptist Forerun the first coming of Christ, you will have a message that will forerun the second coming. So, I understand this morning that we just go so far with this being a lighthouse, I, I, I understand that. We can't just fool around with that. It's got to be something inside us. And it's got to be a message inside us. That can, without criticizing, defeat 
criticism. God has given us a message. What message do you have? I haven't heard it. <laughs> As it's been said, we, we don't have enough preachers for seven thunders. I don't have any preachers. <laughs> Don't never cut God short. Because He'll fool you every time. It says that judgment must begin. At the house of God. Other words, this is where that it is all started. I'm not talking about just here. I'm talking about here, there, in other places that preachers are preaching the truth. I just read up there where that we are stewards of the mysteries of God. It tells in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Or 1 Corinthians chapter 4, chapter 5 is we are ambassadors. A steward is someone that is close by. An ambassador is somebody that carries a message someplace else. It's the same message. It's the same truth. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? My. Where is disobedience? Where does it come in? If you walk away, you're in disobedience. Where does that judgment end? God, this morning, is looking down upon each one of us to carry a truth. And brother, sister, when we depart this place, we are still carriers. And if the righteous... If the righteous scarcely be saved, other words, the righteous will be saved, but it says if they scarcely 
really be saved. That takes out the world. That takes out evil, evil thoughts, desires. This world will rob you. It will rob me of the blessings of God. This vessel that the Holy Ghost is in, I'm responsible for that vessel. You, I, I'm not responsible for your vessel. You're not responsible for my vessel. We are, we have our own responsibility for the life that we live. But the Bible says, if we would judge ourselves, then we should not be judged. I could go over into the third chapter of the book of James and talk about the tongue. I'm not ready to do that. The Bible says it is an unruly evil. This is still gospel. This is not something that I'm pulling out that don't belong in the message. If the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall this sinner, where shall the ungodly? There's two different categories there. The ungodly and the sinner appear. That's that man that's never made a profession and that's that man that has made a profession or woman. Ungodly. Where shall they appear? Not, it's not good. Wherefore let them that suffer according to the will of God, commit the keeping of their souls to Him in well-doing as unto a faithful Creator. I want to... Go to a very familiar scripture now. Acts I'll start at 37. This, this is the first message that Peter ever preached. I'd, 
I wish we had some way to transfer that to us. You may say, well, I would have liked to have been there. Well, you'd been dead. In order to have been there, you a Gentile, you'd have had to have been a proselyte. <laughs> because there was a few proselytes there. You, you looking at this, you're thinking, well, he's going to preach on Acts 2.38. I've got some pointers here that I want to use. Now, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Here comes the key that Jesus has given to Peter. Like I said, this is Peter's first message. My, it was something else. He goes back in the Scripture. He goes back in the book of Joel, brings that in, which is prevalent for the time we're living in. Because he said before the great and dreadful day of the Lord come, the sun shall be darkened and the moon shall be turned to blood. <coughs> That's today. The, the hour we're living in. Because there's two things there. Before the great and then the dreadful. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. There are three things there that was demanded. We always look at the Holy Ghost in that. But this is the final result of what that he's talking about. First of all, there must be conviction of sins. And the Word of God will bring that conviction. And he says, repent. That is being sorry for the life that you've lived. And he don't leave anyone out. He says, every one of you. And be baptized. The second part. And be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. I want to talk to you young people. Some of you come up often for salvation. That's not necessary. If you are seeking salvation, you repent of your sins and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, then the Holy Ghost will come. And uh, there's, there's a misunderstanding in that 
because whenever you've repented and been baptized, it, that's the time that you go to God to seek Him because you are already sorry for your sins. And when you're baptized, that is, your sins are remitted. You are a candidate for the Holy Ghost. Do you understand what I'm saying? Don't degrade the grace of God. Don't make it look like a cheap thing. And the thing about it is, if we do not follow these instructions to repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, there's no way we can get into that body. Amen. Amen. We're not, we're not, we may be a part of being at faith assembly, but we're not a part of the body of Christ. We'll never make it. Some may say, you're too hard. I'm no harder than Peter was that day. I'm sure he got excited. I'm sure they were excited whenever they, whenever they come out of that upper room. Brother, sister, the Holy Ghost was, re had refreshed them. They were fresh on the Holy Ghost. I'm not hollering because that I'm mad. I'm hollering because I'm glad. I may stomp the floor. <laughs> these, these things are necessary. And I say, if you've been if you have repented of your sins, <clears throat> these preachers get on television and they say, all you got to do is repeat after me. Now you have the Holy Ghost. That is not true. Well, I read in chapter 10 there of, uh, of Acts where they received the Holy Ghost before they were baptized. But the thing about it is, Peter and all the rest of them needed some kind of evidence they had what they had as a reason for it. Chapter 19 of Acts, it says in the, in the 19th chapter, Paul went into Ephesus, and when he got into Ephesus, he found twelve men. That, and he asked them, how were you baptized? When, they, when he realized they didn't have the Holy Ghost, he said, how were you baptized? Under John's baptism. And he goes ahead to express about John being a great man and everything, but then he went ahead and he said, talked about John, then he went ahead and said, John truly baptized with water into repentance, but you need to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Whenever they did, he laid hands on them, they received the Holy Ghost. So, brother and sister, don't cheat the grace of God. You repent and you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Whenever you repent, then you baptize in the name of Jesus Christ. Then that takes your 
sin deeds that you have done in this body away. The blood of Jesus Christ takes care of your old sins Amen. that you were born with. You were born in sin. You were shaping in iniquity. I was too. Understand? Are you beginning to understand? Young people, it is, it is something, the Holy Ghost is something that you need, but if you have repented and been baptized, you are a candidate for it. I remember Brother Jerry Maddox talking about his testimony. He was saved. He come here one night, sat back there, three or four rows up, he told me. And he didn't go he didn't go up front for prayer, but right there in his seat he received something. Right? It's not where you at, it's where your heart is. Everybody don't receive it in the same way. No. The experience makes some people run. It makes some people shout. It makes some people jump up and down. But I remember when David North he come into church that night, and I don't know if he'd been here before, but it was when the move of the Lord was on, he come up to the altar and fell right there and laid there two hours. Just out, just like a dead man. No, you couldn't get up. I, rem I remember in a little old Methodist church. I'd heard this message. This message was real to me. And I was standing before the pulpit of that Methodist church. And whenever God got a hold of me, I spun around. There was nothing I could do about it and fell right into a bench. You don't have to get it that way. Just get it. <laughs> get it! Yes. It may come to you easy. You may not shout. You may not, you may not move a, a, a limb. Just praise the Lord. And here it comes and tears fall down your eyes. And you say, thank you, Lord. And don't let the devil beat you up. I don't care how you get it. Just get it. Is that plain enough? I can't make it any plainer than that. But, if you don't repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, you're not a part of the body of Christ. Amen. You're not. Amen. Well, I, I know a lot of good people. I do too. But what about the Scripture? Amen. What are we going to do about that? David said, as the heart doth thirst after the water brook, water brook, so does my heart thirst for God. Brother Branham said it like this. Before a fish could ever be, there had to be water. Before a fish could ever have a fin, there had to be a water.
I go down the road every once in a while and I see where a buzzard has died, where it got run over because it didn't know to pull a carcass out of the road. But an eagle, when they kill, they take it with them. Because they're going to feast on that till it's gone. We're not buzzards this morning. We're eagles. I want to go to Matthew chapter 22. Starting in verse 1. And Jesus answered and spoke or spake unto them again by parables and said, Remember, this is a parable. The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king which made a marriage for his son. This is talking about the great heavenly father that made a marriage for his son. I don't say these things this morning to try to hurt. I say these things this morning to try to get somebody an understanding of what the will of the Lord is. And as I said a while ago, without we follow Scripture, no matter how good a life we live, This church world is getting to be something else. The old Pope said you can be homosexual, you can be married one to another, and you, and you will go to heaven. You can even be an atheist. If you're a good atheist, you'll go to heaven because he said there's no hell. <laughs> Chapter 20, verse 19 and 20 is waiting on him of Revelation. He'll see. Like unto a certain king which made a marriage for his son. And sent forth his servants. That's talking of the prophets. To call them that were bidden to the wedding and they would not come. Again, he sent forth other servants, saying, Tell them which are bidden, Behold, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and my fatlings are killed, and all things are ready Come unto the marriage. But they made light of it. Oh, Jeremiah, he preached. Then he was put in the dungeon in a, a hole where water had been and muck and mire in there. And fed the Bread and water of affliction. Isaiah was sown asunder. You have, you have all of these things that the Jewish people done unto the prophets that God sent unto them.
He pray, my oxen, my fatlings are killed and all things are ready. Come unto the marriage. That, come. That's, that's how God is. I, I, can just, I can just feel what Jesus was saying there. Come. What I say unto one, I say unto all, come. But they made light of it and went their ways, one to his farm, another to his merchandise. Judgment. Is hanging over them and they reject mercy. <clears throat> and the remnant took their servants and entreated them spitefully and slew them. I'm reminded this morning of what's going on in Israel at this time. Watching the news. There's a Palestinian from Florida, which was an American city uh, a citizen, went over to Israel, and he got among the rock throwers. Sixteen years old, and the Israeli, uh, I guess, soldiers beat him up pretty bad. They show that over and over and over, but they don't show those three Israeli boys with their bodies burnt and throw piled rocks on them. No. Them, them evil Israelis, they're going to see something in the Middle East in a short while that's going to shame them because God's a warrior. He is. God is a warrior. And when the king heard thereof, he was wroth. God's, God's getting ready to get mad said that he didn't say that he was angry, he was wrong. Beyond just plain anger. He was wroth and sent forth his armies and destroyed those murderers and burned up their city in 70 A.D., this happened. My. What it talks about there in Matthew 24, how that they, how that he talked about the tribulation of that time, of which your prophecy preachers want to say that's in this time. <laughs> Tell him, the Jews to flee to the mountains. My. That's done happened. Happened almost 2,000 years ago. That was, and those that heard the words of Jesus escaped. But the others. They fell with the city, starved to death. That's what he's talking about right here. Then saith he to his servants, The wedding is ready, but they which were bidden were not worthy. That's speaking of that hour. Now we, we come into the Gentile age. Go therefore into the highways 
And as many as you find, bid them to the marriage. Go into the highways and to the byways and bid them to come. So those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all as many as they found, both bad and good. And the wedding was furnished with guests. That is not speaking about them being bad after they come to Christ. Now that was that old sinner maybe down at a bar someplace just living his life but, but God convicted him. And when he said, here am I, then he, then he made his way to an altar of prayer. I don't care if it was in his bedroom. I don't care if it's in a cornfield. It's not where you're at. It's where your heart is. <clears throat> so the servants went out into the highways and gathered together all as many as they found they found that would listen both bad and good and the wedding was furnished with guests that that is speaking of how they were when they come it wasn't said after they done that that they were furnished the guest it was furnished with guests unless there had been a change Revelation 19 says the bride hath past tense before the rapture made herself ready. That's why we're here today to get ready and I want young people to get ready. You don't have to repent 900 times if you understand. You don't have to be baptized over and over and over if you understand. Because whenever God forgives, He don't remember. The devil comes along and says to you, you need to do this again. And when you go to God, he says, I don't remember. Forget it! And when the king came in to see the guest, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. Oh my goodness. He had not a wedding garment on. He didn't listen to the message. He didn't listen to the repentance. He didn't listen to the baptism. You say, well, you're putting an awful lot of emphasis up on that. I believe if you just if you just live good, if you just lived a good life, you'd make it. No, 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 no. No. No, no, no.
And he saith unto him, Friend, he may be among you today. I want to I want to be more than just a friend. I want to be a family member. Friend? How camest thou in hither? Not having a wedding garment. And he was speechless. This all happens before the rapture. If you don't receive the message, you won't be here at the end. Friend, how came us down hither not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless and said the king to the servants, bind him hand and foot and take him away and cast him into outer darkness there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth for many are called but few are chosen. Friend, don't let that catch you. Do something about it while you have time. Because the door is going to close before before the rapture. The door is going to close because there's got to be some preparation made before we can be in the bride of Christ. we got to bear that fruit. Well, I liked you up till this time. I hope you like me afterward because I've told you the truth. Some people say, well, the truth never hurts. It does. It's hurt a lot of people. This, you have, you have the tares, you have the chap, and this is the last thing. This is the last thing before the rapture. Heavenly Father, thank you, Father. You've been so good to me. You've helped me, Lord, to answer the call. And Father, I don't stand here so holy that I can't say, Father, forgive me. Forgive me, Lord, is my call unto Thee of all my shortcomings. Lord, I believe you do. So help us in the hour that we're living in, Lord, to not just surmise, but to, to deal directly with you, with the Spirit of God, the Lord, to where we can be clothed with that great Holy Spirit. That, Lord, we can be a walking, living example in this darkened hour that we may show forth light. Help us, Father, in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. May the Lord bless you this morning.
Thank you, Brother Allen, for that message. If you haven't been born again, the time is getting close. So we'll pay attention to what is being preached. Sister Tammy Polston just got a message that her husband might have had a heart attack, so just remember her in prayer. Let us all stand. If you have a need and you'd like to come up for prayer, and then feel free as Brother David comes. Oh, all our 
sins, please forgive, give us life that we may live, let us feel the touch of your anointed hand. Oh, now sweet, oh, sweet anointing, flowing down to me. And when you said it is 
finished, your last breath was gone too late. They replied, What have we done? One said, Surely, oh, this was the Son of God. Oh, but your Grace. Oh, it's still sufficient for me. Oh, there's still power oh, in your blood to say the law with just one touch by your strife. Oh, we are here. If we believe Oh, sometimes I think about The life you lived And the cross you bore Walking up that hill And I wonder Why you lost someone like me so unworthy oh so full of sin i help drive the nails in your precious hands still you love me oh i can understand oh but your love is unconditional Oh, your mercy is so sweet for all and your grace Oh, it's still sufficient for me Oh, there's still power Oh, in your blood to save the lost with just one touch by your stride oh we are here if we believe oh but your love is unconditional oh, your mercy is so sweet for all and your grace for thee oh there's still power oh in your blood to save the lost with just one touch by your stride oh we are here if we believe Your love is unconditional. Your mercy is so sweet for all, and your grace, oh, it's still sufficient for me. Oh, there's still power. Say the loss with just one touch by your stride. Oh, we are here if we believe. Thank you, Brother David. Sister Tammy Polston's husband is being stat flighted to Louisville and they think he's had a, a stroke so just pray for that need and 
Okay. Okay. Okay, let us remember them needs. Brother David, would you dismiss us in prayer and pray over these needs? <laughs> Hey. May the Lord.